Now, when I press the run button to test it out, I get three errors immediately come up. One is on line 78, and you can see here, I forgot to put a then at the end of my if statement. And on line 91, it's the same issue here. I forgot to put the then. Now you might be wondering, why does Professor Coates keep doing that? Well, <laughs> because I don't write in basic very often, and in almost every other language out there, you don't have to put the then clause at the end of it. So I'm not used to doing the, the then at the end of an if. So that's why I keep getting uh, called on this. But anyway, hopefully that's it. I saved those. I fixed those errors, saved it, and run it again. So here we go. If I choose rock, computer chose paper, I chose rock, computer wins, okay? Do I want to play again? If I say no, it's continuing to play. So that's a problem. So we need to look at our logic there to see what, what went wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up. Notice that my loop variable is play again, and I'm using this variable called response. Now where did the response come from? I should have been using play again there, so I'm going to change that. Sometimes it's helpful to put a list of your variables somewhere just so that you know what you've got. So if you type in something different, you'll look and say, wait a minute, that's not on my list of variables. In, in basic, it's very sloppy because you don't have to declare your variables. You just When you need them, you just start using them. And that, that can cause problems like this where you won't get a syntax error, but in most languages, I would have had a syntax error because I would never have declared response. And it would have choked at that point and not run. So let's try this again. If I choose rock, okay, we both chose rock, tie. So I'm gonna choose rock again. It's a tie. Choose it again. Okay, this time the computer chose scissors. I chose rock. Rock smashes scissors. I win. Do you want to play again? Now if I say N, number of games you won was one. Number of games the computer won. It shows nothing. Now the reason it shows nothing is because I never initialized the variables. So it never was set to anything. So to make that problem go away, what I should do is up at the top of the program, I should set user games one to zero, computer games one to zero, and that will give those two variables a starting point, making them show up later on. Okay, let's see what we get. All right, I choose rock. Computer chose scissors, rock smashes scissors, don't want to play again, no. And this time it works right, I, I won one game, computer won zero. So let's, uh, let's crank it a little bit further out. Rock smashes scissors. Now, if I put in gibberish, it asks me again. The only thing I could do here is, is I could print out an additional message that says you can't do that, or invalid, or something like that. Uh, I'll just leave it this way, assuming that they understand. They didn't get it right. They have to type it again. Uh, that's something that we could add that in with a simple if statement. Okay, well, what I mean by that is right here where, you're, where you are asked to choose rock, paper, or scissors, if you screw up, uh, you meaning the user screws up, I could just say here, invalid entry, uh, try again. That way, it 
forces them to, to get it right. Now, obviously there's a lot of different ways to implement this and one of the things you might think about is the user is going to get sick of typing in rock, paper, and scissors all the time. Why don't we just let them type R, P, or S? And that's definitely um, something that would, would uh, make their life easier. And your life easier too when you test the program. And it would be really simple to do. You would simply put, you'd have to let them know they need to type R, P, or S. So you would say something like type R for rock, P for paper, or S for scissors. So I would say something like this. And then here. I would simply check for those other conditions and so I could do that now the only problem is that the user choice will now be R, P, and S. So if I say you chose R, I'd rather say you chose rock. So what I would have to do is, is translate that back. If user choice equals R, then user choice equals rack. Else if user choice equals P, then user choice paper, else, scissors, like that. So that you're, you're taking the, the letter they type in and you're, you're converting it over into what they should have typed in. originally. So with that change in place, let's try this again here. So now it says type R for rock, P for paper, S for scissors. So if I, if I type in R, then you can see here. Now if I type a lowercase s, it says it's an invalid entry. Now. I probably want to accept lowercase letters instead of uppercase because there, there's no sense for them to have to capitalize these, these letters. The reason I capitalized them is that I wanted them to stand out in the sentence where it says R, P, and S. But what I can do is make, the, make it lowercase. So here I would say user choice equals text dot 
vert to lowercase user choice. That way, if they were to, to type in an uppercase P, it would switch it to lowercase, no problem. So I'm going to put that in as well in both places because it's the priming read has to match up with what's inside of the while loop. And now when I run it, I don't have to type a uppercase P. I can put lowercase in and it understands what I'm doing. Okay. The only other thing I can think of that you could improve, you notice how all the text is this kind of there's no space at all in this at all, anywhere. I would suggest that you do add a little bit of space. And you can do that right here where it says, do you want to play again? I can do a right line statement. And I need to put the, uh, the double quotes inside of it. that's going to do is if I say yes I want to play again it, it puts a space there and you'd be surprised how that little detail helps the readability of the code now it's much easier to see okay here's my first round here's my second here's my third and the computer won twice I won once and you can see it it's just easier to to, um, to do that you could you could take advantage of color you could do all kinds of things to make this program nicer and a little easier to understand, more intuitive, and so forth. But that it basically at this point works and it uses, as we saw, a variety of techniques, while loops, ifs, nested ifs. We've got just a, a hodgepodge of things in here that program is doing. So now it is basic, it's not case sensitive, and you'll notice here it, it doesn't fix, like when I type else if in lower case, it doesn't correct that automatically. Now Visual Basic does, which is the kind of the next generation of this software, but free, Small Basic does not. So, and I thought you could right click and say format program, and it would take care of stuff like that. But it, what that just does is it pulls all the tabs it basically lines up all of my tabs in the way they should be lined up, but it doesn't fix the case problems. And they're not really problems, they're just inconsistencies. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to leave it this way for now, but, you know, being the way I am, I would probably wouldn't be able to sleep at night until I fixed all those up. But for the sake of our video here, we're going to call it good. 131 lines of code, some of it's uh, blank space but 131 lines of code and we have rock, paper, scissors. One player game against the computer. So I hope you found this helpful. When you do the slot machine program, you'll have something similar to this. A lot of similarities really. And so use this as a guide. I'll, I'll put the code for this that, are, that you see here out in the folder for this week. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know.